Welcome to Sound and Nerd's Doodle Tutor series. This video will walk you through identifying the pancreas by vascular landmarks and basic images you will need to image the pancreas by ultrasound. We will start with going over the landmarks, then draw and label images, and end with some tips for imaging the pancreas. Ultrasound is not the best tool to image the pancreas. Due to its proximity to the stomach and the bowel, it's often obscured by bowel gas. The liver and spleen can both work as windows to the pancreas if a patient's anatomy allows, though. Use vascular landmarks and the tips covered in this video to help aid in the visualization of the pancreas. You'll want to assess for masses, cysts, echogenicity, and dilation of the main duct. When the pancreas is obscured by gas, it can be really helpful to identify the more easily seen midline vessels. Knowing how the pancreas is related to the vascular landmarks will then allow your eye to kind of find that pancreas tissue. Take a look at this chart. This chart will cover the basic vascular landmarks to help identify pancreatic sections. Starting with the incident process, if you can identify the inferior vena cava and the superior mesenteric vein, you should have the incident process in between. These landmarks are also going to work in long. When the IVC is lengthened out, the short axis of the incident process will be just anterior to it. The same is true for the head of the pancreas. In transverse, identify the IVC and the portal confluence. You may also see the gastroduodenal artery and the common bile duct. These are all key landmarks for the head of the pancreas. Identifying the IVC in the sagittal plane and visualizing the portal vein superior to it will also bring you to the head of the pancreas. The body of the pancreas can be more difficult to see as the stomach can overlie this area. However, look for the aorta and the superior mesenteric artery. When the superior mesenteric artery becomes visible anterior to the aorta, the pancreas body should be the next anterior structure. Don't forget, you can also see the body anterior to the elongated aorta. You'll also see an elongated superior mesenteric artery. Lastly, the tail is the most often obscured section due to the stomach sitting anterior to it. The tail also dives deep into the body, making it trickier to see. Identify the splenic vein in grayscale or with color. This will show you the posterior border of the tail and help you to locate the borders of the pancreas tail. Sweep through the pancreas and transverse, and then prepare to take dedicated pancreas images. In most people, the pancreas sits in two planes, meaning that the head of the pancreas and the tail of the pancreas are not well visualized with just one image. While it may be possible to get one decent to suboptimal image of the entire pancreas, it is appropriate to take more than one image of the pancreas, allowing you to focus on dedicated sections. While these images are standard practice of care, remember that you may feel it is necessary to take more images to provide a diagnostic exam or may be required to take more images or add in longitudinal images by your employer. If you are drawing along, make sure you have your paper and pen now. If you want to print out pre-made sectors, check out the link in the description box. After each image is completed, you may want to pause to complete your drawing before moving to the next image. Start by imaging the pancreas head and neck in the transverse plane. Hold the transducer in a true transverse position with the notch in the 9 o'clock location. Move your transducer to the left lobe of the liver at the level of the ligamentum teres. Angle the probe inferiorly. By keeping your probe at the liver, you'll use it as a window to see the pancreas. This method can be harder on people with small left lobes, though. Keep an eye out for the IVC and transverse, and look for the gastroduodenal artery and the common bile duct at the head of the pancreas. Locating the head of the pancreas can help us to identify the common bile duct and look for blockages of the biliary and pancreatic ductal systems. The head of the pancreas is also the most common location for cancer to appear, which is another good reason why we should be taking dedicated pancreas head images. Make sure that you can see the pancreas tissue surrounded by our landmarks. The liver is anterior, the duodenum to the patient's right, the inferior cava posterior, and the portal confluence to the patient's left. Some other structures that you may also be able to see are the gastroduodenal artery and the common bile duct in the head of the pancreas, the aorta and the superior mesenteric artery posterior, the spine even further posterior, and more of the pancreas towards the patient's left. Next, we're going to focus on the body and the tail of the pancreas. This portion of the pancreas sits at an angle in the body. Keep angling through the liver, but try turning your transducer's notch to the 7 o'clock location. By slightly obliquing your transducer, you should be able to lengthen the tail. 
You may need to also increase your depth to see the very posterior tip of the tail. Look for the aorta and the superior mesenteric artery to identify the body, and then also look for the splenic vein to help identify the tail. This image makes up the bulk of the pancreas tissue, so look for your vascular landmarks as you are trying to identify the pancreatic parenchyma. The aorta and the superior mesenteric artery should be easily visible, and once you identify it, look for the brighter level gray tissue anterior to it. Turn your transducer to elongate the tail, and you'll see the splenic vein also elongate. Major landmarks include the liver anterior and the splenic vein, superior mesenteric artery, and the aorta posterior. Other midline structures may be seen as well, such as the stomach and bowel, the left renal vein coursing between the SMA and the aorta, the IVC, the portal confluence, and the spine. We often try to image the pancreas first in the abdominal protocol. As the patient breathes during the exam, we might find it harder to see the pancreas tissue. However, there are times that the pancreas is just not going to be seen, or maybe only a portion of it is visible. In this event, it is okay to take a picture of the pancreas area, but make sure you've tried all the tools in your toolbox before taking an image just labeled as area. I've covered a few tips already, but let's review those and a couple others to help you image the pancreas. Newer scanners have a really hard time seeing the pancreas. Remember, the more that you scan, the more you'll be able to pick out the pancreatic tissue out of the sea of gray. It's common for newer scanners to take an area picture just to have the pancreas beautifully visible in their transleft liver inferior image. That is because the liver is a soft tissue window that'll help to propagate the sound wave into the body to see deeper. When we scan directly over bowel, the air in the bowel causes the sound wave to attenuate or scatter, and the sound wave can't image as clearly. So keep the probe at the level of the liver and try angling through the liver down towards the pancreas. There are a few positional tricks that you can try to see the pancreas too. First, try having your patient take a really deep breath in. Remember that the abdominal organs can move one to two centimeters with a full breath in and might give you a good window to the pancreas. Another trick to try is having your patient create a Santa belly or a pregnant belly. This can be kind of hard to explain to your patient, but it does include pushing the abdominal muscles out and rounding the abdomen. This pushes the bowel down and can move it off the pancreas. Another option may be to have your patient sit up. Gravity may allow the liver to drape over the pancreas and move bowel more inferior. Lastly, giving the patient water to fill the stomach can be helpful for visualizing the tail of the pancreas, but it only provides a short window. This method is best saved for patients that cannot have other modes of imaging like a CT, yet the pancreas is still the area of concern. This method is not often used regardless though, as the effort does not always pay off. These patients may also be candidates for a transesophageal ultrasound that uses a small probe in the esophagus to image the structures like the pancreas and the bile ducts from behind or within the body. The pancreas does sit obliquely in the body. The head is the most inferior part of the pancreas, where the tail sits more superior, but the tail is also the most posterior part. Holding the transducer with the notch at the 9 o'clock position will help to visualize the head and neck well. Turn the notch down towards the seven o'clock position to elongate the body and tail. Thanks for watching Sano Nerd's Doodle Tutor on the Pancreas Protocol. Be sure to check back for more drawings and other educational content.